and good evening and welcome to the Football Fanatic Podcast, <clears throat> episode 50, 5 zero, with your original three lads. Massey isn't with us, but that's okay, it doesn't matter. The original Go three on. are here. To, yeah, he's <laughs> gone, he's finished. He, Got fired. <laughs> ten, ten Hag was uh, out the door today and so was Massey. I don't, he'll be back, he'll be back next Monday. Um, yeah, lads, congrats. Brilliant to make 50 episodes. Yeah, congrats back to yourself. Yeah, make cheers. it happen. Well done. Yeah, if you could just make 50 years of age now. <laughs> Dan, look, I'll make fifty, but the way you're talking right now, you're not sounding great, man. So I'll be more worried about uh, you making forty rather than fifty. Oh man, I tell you, I do. Want, I'm in that age bracket now where uh, it's just a chain reaction of stags and weddings. That's just yeah. one of my life at the moment. Now, yeah, so it's I'm on the I'm on the rough end of a of a two day stag. Two day where stag I come home and I have just... yeah, go on. Yeah, two day stags just fucking d- d- dangerous at this stage, you know, in your thirties. In your twenties you'll do it, you'll power yeah. through a bit of uh, adrenaline, but I mean in your thirties, you know, mm. a few drinks and you're crying in the corner, <laughs> like you know. Yeah, yeah. I had to sit down with like teenage Dan today and have a conversation with him in the mirror there and say, you know, you need to you need to just move it in town. I ever for this. Take oh, a, long, a long, long look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. Um anyways, look. 50 episodes in and going going strong. It's going brilliant. And uh, yeah, it's fairly, what do you call it? What do you call it? It's poetic because a large part of our 50 episodes <laughs> has been covering, you know, big teams. Man United being one of them. And I suppose just Man United are the gift that keeps on giving because today they sacked Eric Tan, Eric Ten Hag. And I mean, we've covered that over the last, we've covered it like, Ten Hag, what he has to do when, when what do you call it, last season it was quite poor, should he have stayed during the summer, should he have been gone, he's gone now, so I don't want to kind of look backwards, I want to kind of focus on United and what they need to do, who's going to come in, what that person needs to focus on, Um. so just first of all your thoughts today, it's not a surprise that Ten Hag is gone, who do you think is next in line to come in, I mean who, this Mourinho, Van Hal, Shoshkir, Ralph Rangnack, I completely forgot about him. Uh, now Eric Ten Hag. Well, next, um, next. While, we're, while we've been recording, Deck, just breaking news, what are we oh, recording? Well, I don't know. The last 30 minutes, uh, David Ornstein has said that they're, United are working on a deal for you, Matt Ruben Amarin. He's the guy oh, from Sporting, Sporting yeah. Lisbon. Okay. So yeah. they're ready to pay a 10 mil release clause go. and they're in talks with him to finalise it. He's 39 year old Portuguese manager. I think there was talk of. Was it Chelsea or oh, no Liverpool? Wasn't it at that time? Liverpool, yeah, uh, yeah, Liverpool yeah. Go from. It's actually West Ham, Liverpool. There was about three or four clubs like Chelsea. He was linked basically with all of the the clubs that were uh, looking for a manager and turned the summer. And I can't remember who it was. Was it West Ham where they were looking at him or something? Then yeah. just, he didn't. I don't know. Something went wrong or went awry with it. But uh, yeah, sure. Look, it's. I've heard the name, but I'll be honest, I know yeah. nothing about it. No, either do I. But uh, it, it'll be a change from what we thought in regards to Van Nistelrooy stepping up and taking yeah. the reins for a while. It looks like this was in probably, you know, before the last international break was in the pipeline uh, to happen uh, if, let's say, yeah, results didn't go Ten Hag's way. So it looks like he, this guy is going to be the new manager. Um, would it be my first pick? I don't know much about this guy, but uh, I I would have gotten someone maybe of a bit more um uh how do you say uh, I just saw her uh, uh, heritage or, or a bit more who, like, yeah who, a bit more stock mind. maybe well like uh, it doesn't have to like maybe I would have said Nagel's man might have been a choice I heard put out there um yeah. you know someone someone of that like you know has a bit of youth about them. But but also ha- has a bit of uh, you know a history or 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 uh, winning mentality and and can back it up with trophies you know that they have yeah, that no, in the, in the, in their in the background so probably a surprising well, appointment an appointment that you you wouldn't hang your hat on no. to succeed but I, also um, you know I think I think the likes of yeah it, it'll it, you need you need someone in there that's going to be a strong takes no crap manager. And has very good ideas t- uh, tactically, and get the players on board. So well, let's see, let's see what's going to happen with him. Just while you were saying that, how strong, one hundred percent. That's what they need. Like they need that and more. But I mean, yeah, did did they not have that? Like in Mourinho, and it was Shoshkar. Fair enough. You you could kind of you could take the piss out of Shoshkar. You get the impression, like, but 
even Ten Hag had a bit of bite about him in his first season. I mean, have they not had that type of manager in the last in Mourinho in Ten Hag, and it hasn't worked? So like, I I don't know what I don't know anything about this um this new Amarin. Uh, I'm like, just reading. I'm sorry. I'm just reading as you're. Uh, yeah, I was just reading there while you were chatting. Um, yeah, no. I just like I, I read beforehand. Like <laughs> he is the favorite now. Obviously, they're they're making moves quickly with him. Then Van Nistelrooy Southgate. That I was listening to the radio. About Southgate. That, yeah, like, couldn't have Southgate. Southgate. Yeah. That, that was, uh, they would be up in arms if that was the case. Like, they yeah. would just be up in arms. Thomas Frank was in there as well. That's actually one that I genuinely could see. Graham yeah. Potter then and Javi. I mean, what has Javi done to warrant? First of all, I get Barcelona, fair enough. He was a legend at that club, but I mean, he won the league of Barcelona, didn't he? Yeah, but I mean, he won the league. I mean, fair enough. He, he was kind of just handed that job at Barcelona by Laporte. But, anyways, look, yeah. it's, it's looking likely that. You're saying Howard that this Ruben Amram is going. To yeah, be- he's he's well. I'm just looking. He's well. He's well out. Like he's, he, he, not even in any way uh, uh, a price even to even look at now. In regards to betting, like they seem to have it sewn up that he's he's the man. But uh, just looking there, like a bit, a bit about him, like that he, he's won quite a lot. Like <clears throat> he won quite a few trophies with um, with Sporting, and he also gave players like uh, Nunes at that, that, that City. Now he yeah. gave him his kind of first team. Um, a chance uh, under him that as well, but like, but when I just even when I'm reading there, it's again, I remember interesting enough. Yeah, there was talk around Liverpool and West Ham, which is I was reading through a, 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 an article there, but it it is kind of like again, like how strongly do we do we um a uh, we view the Portuguese league, you know, like, like yeah. the Dutch league, like a. Uh, that, that would be my question on it. You know, I hear, like, I'm reading about him, it seems to be that, you know, he's a really good reputation for improving young players. Uh, great, you know, this all again, attractive style of football, blah, 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 blah. But, like, he's doing it in in a in a league that realistically there's probably three teams in. Yeah, more yeah. than if you look at it. So, basically, if you take, for example, I'm just talking on the fly here now, so I, if I'm rambling, stop me. But, uh, like, so Porto, Benfica, and Lisbon are the main three teams. You could say Braga, maybe, but like the main three teams in uh, in Portugal and in yeah. Holland, it's it's Feyenoord, PSV, and Ajax. So yeah. like it's just I suppose that's just what's coming into my head is is uh, you're going and taking a punt. Any manager they're going to bring in is is going to be a punt. I don't think they can go down. They've done the interim thing. They've done it with Ralph. They've done it with Ali. I think Ralph. they've done that, and and it's like. It's it's like uh, and even Giggs. I was looking at there too. Like Giggs yeah. was there for a little while as well, and uh, and Carrick was as well. Yeah. Intro, yeah, yeah. Um, positions, but I think they've been there and done that. Uh, I'd say Van Nistelrooy maybe if it is true what 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 is happening might be the peeve that he, he isn't going to really get a chance to yeah. even try and lay a marker down for himself. But um, yeah, I don't know. Just be my question would be like you know doing it in Portuguese. It's a massive, it's a massive step up. Of course. It is. Um. And I think anyone that comes into it, we've seen over the years, it's, it's a poison jealous. So yeah. just interesting that the news is here this evening. So they obviously have had that in the pipeline. But the whole thing, when you look at it, like we, we sat here and talked numerous times on the podcast and listened to waves and waves of ex Man United players, uh, pundits, uh, media talk about like the, the changes, the structures, and the structure this and changing that. This person's out, this person's in. Or like it's the same old kind of circus of course uh, is, yeah. uh, that, that we're kind of witnessing before. here. We've seen and if anything to, before, like. and if, if you want, my actual opinion is, is like what's actually happened to Ten Hag and the situation that they found themselves in the summer is like it's nearly worse than some of the other shit that had gone before. I think like yeah. have a manager there who's, who's they obviously were thinking of getting rid of him, and the FA Cup was the Hail Mary. That kept him there, like that's and that, that's pretty much. You point, can't be point. making a decision based off one result, like that's. I think yeah. that's where they let themselves down in that aspect. Like the, it kind of shows you. It's kind of worrying from United point of view because it shows them do these. It does Jim Radcliffe do they know exactly what they're doing because their first main thing that they were supposed to do was put in a good manager and they fail at that in the first hurdle. So, yeah. Ca- yeah. would you have faith in them coming in and, and hiring someone who's going to change things uh, now? So yeah, and Howard and Howard on that. Like think of. As well, they backed him. So basically, they didn't fancy him. Decided to give a new contract. Yeah. There's talk like now as we're reading lots of stuff coming out again in the media, of course, but it seems to be, you know, Alex Ferguson thing, the cost cutting measures, cost cutting here, there, and everywhere. But yeah, they gave Ten Hag, who they didn't fancy. Well, how much did he spend in the summer? Like 200 million or something? 250, yeah. Yeah, in the summer. So they, they backed him, knowing that they don't fancy him. 
So, and, and now, when you look at the yeah. money that he's actually spending there, like, again, it'd be interesting. You manage it in, but, like, it doesn't look great, like, you know. Indeed, no. like, like, given, I suppose, given the financial kind of uh, <clears throat> issues that have been highlighted, how much Ten Hag was given, and let's be honest, he's blown it, I think. Some of the players he brought in have been rubbish. Anthony for 80 million being the highlight. Um, will this new man be given that type of money or will he be expected to work with what is there? Do you think? Yeah, I think I think you're gonna have to give you're gonna you're not gonna have to you're not gonna be able to give him that type of money all the time because they're they're not they're yeah. revenue wise they, 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 they don't have it, yeah, yeah. They're just gonna keep oh. digging a hole. So like he's gonna have to he's gonna have to work to an extent of what what they have. Like they got your man Zersky in there, like you know, there was teams that were interested in Zersky, but there was no there was no one of a high caliber really going for him. And he had a release clause of forty million. Yeah, you know you're like, right, let's go in and get him. And it was just kind of a bit like are you actually going for players at that level? You know, he yeah. is a good player, but like he's not going to change. You. He's not going to be your starting uh, number yeah. nine or whatever. Like what? So it's just a strange one that like they're they're already targeting. You know, De Lit. Okay, De Lit was a good player at Ajax, but you know, again, you know, Bayern Munich were happy to see the back from. It's just they're they're kind of going for players now that are just, you know, are they at the level of United? Are supposed to be at the level of United? And and Ten Hag has probably been an influence and all that and, and it's probably not been good he's been he's been coming with that maybe Ajax uh, mentality and maybe you know this Ameren lad might have the same thing oh I'll buy some players in Sporting Lisbon but like are they the players that are going to change yeah. and I, you know it's just it's yeah. hard to say like, like, yeah and you, you wonder um, like so obviously Hag he brought in players that he trusted players that he knew you have yeah. that thing already where they, they, he attracted you know players that he'd worked with before so now he's after getting the age so they're going to be left now with again damage limitation of money, as you said, their deck overspent on certain players. Are left with them here now, and it's the same cycle that United have had. And we could probably sit here and actually count them in the one hand since Ferguson the signings the United made that have actually worked out. I'd say one hand, you might get maybe six or seven. But like, you know what I mean? It's been a graveyard for players, and it has like it has. It's been a graveyard, and I don't know why what that reason is, but um, is it is it just solely down to the types of players that they're going for? But like it's been a graveyard for players, and you know what you're there. Like, it? look, one. No, it's just kind of, kind of, just kind of moving on. Like what you were saying is one hundred percent accurate. And on the radio today as well, I heard that Ten Hag was fired because he wasn't reaching the standards that United have set. And I just kind of thought to myself, like the standards that United have set, like it's not like it was two or three years ago. <clears throat> you know, they were like the last time won the league was eleven years ago with Ferguson, like. That's a long time ago. And I mean, a lot of managers have come and gone since. And United are nowhere near, obviously, the top of the table anymore. So is it time to kind of start thinking of United? As at the moment, they're in 14th. I just looked at fixtures. Mad, like yeah. Everton and Leicester both play on Saturday at 3 o'clock. United not until Sunday at 4. If Everton and Leicester were to win, they'll leapfrog United. United will be in 16th. Okay. Mm. If if results go their way, I see where and you're I going mean, with this deck. <laughs> and then just, if they lose the following weekend, are we talking about? Well, I know, I know, it's, it's, it's hypothetical, and obviously, but I mean, you've seen you've seen stranger things happen in football. I'm not saying United are anywhere near being a relegated team, but I mean, they're in such bad form, and I mean, you've like so many problems within the club that like be hovering around that area for the rest of the season while this new lad comes in and sorts it out. I mean. They're not. They're not. They're not like a top six. T- they're not a top six team anymore, or even a top half team anymore. Going on their form, start this season. Their form all throughout last season. I mean, I think Ten Hag was lucky, if anything. I mean that they finished in eighth last season. Um, but are they are they a top table squad? No. no. Uh, well, even if, no, okay, if it, okay, t- like look yeah. at their play, but I don't know. Like I, 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 I question it as well. Yeah. Like you know, uh, player for player. Like you know, do they have a starting? Let's say a starting eleven that would be like, wow. They're going to challenge top four or even top eight or whatever. Like, you know, for me, United, United, United squad is stronger than Spurs. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. No, so, like, do you really think so? Though? Like, 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 I think so. Yeah, as a as a squad, I think, I think, I think, I think really, you think Solanke is better than Hoyland? I think Solanke has got more goals than Hoyland. Yeah, so, yeah, Solanke is better than Hoyland for me. Like the the, the wingers. Yeah, who, yeah let's yeah. see. You know, Son and I know. Kuzicelski. Yeah, look, fair, yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think just. As a squad, though, I, I see even at the start of the season, I thought United would get in. I thought they'd sneak probably maybe fourth start of the season. Like, I still don't You're think there's too many United fans, is your <laughs> It's funny, yeah. But I, 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 it's like I still think that uh, that if they got a their best eleven, I suppose, onto the pitch, 
they they they'd, they'd have a chance like of of a uh, of like you know it wasn't that long ago like that they were a uh, you know an early time we'll go back to this, they obviously they won the trophies as well but that they were competing were difficult to beat <clears throat> so you wonder is it just a thing of like that they lost faith in him and is it is it the, is it the players that have got another manager sack? Well, like, yeah. but I do I do think that they're on par. Look, maybe they're not better, but they're definitely on par with with um with Spurs. I think Liverpool, City, and Arsenal are like for the money. If you look at the money, they've made a hames at that side of it. But I think Chelsea, Liverpool, City. And Arsenal are probably a bit, but I don't think after that makes it. You know, what other teams might be there: are Brighton or West Ham. Like United are, are probably squad is probably better than all theirs. Do you know what I mean? Like, so I don't yeah, think that's, I get that. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're not mid table side, but still, I think if they got a Newcastle, um, yeah, I, I again, I think their squad is better than Newcastle's. Like, do you know what I mean? And they have a lot of experience as well. That's the other side of it. They have do have a lot of experience in their squad, yeah. so it must be do. interesting. A new manager comes in again. We're back into the same round of it, but. I do yeah. think that he's he's in not inherent a lot of tripe bikes. There are some no, good, no, he's, good he's players. Not. If there are good um, players there, Howard, it was a good point you brought up. Fair play. Like, do they have a bad squad? They don't want to have a bad squad. But whatever it has been over the last few years, and I mean, the manager has come in, the manager has been thrown under the bus, the manager is gone. And as Dan has said, it just goes round and round, okay? But you cannot keep blaming the manager. I mean, the players are there to perform, but yet they're not performing. But then again, they don't look to have a bad squad. So, like, there's something yeah. there that hasn't clicked for all of these managers. And, I mean, there's nothing there to say that, like, it's going to click for this new lad either. So, oh. you know. I think, I think though, like, to, to, to put in the context of how can any player, you put any, any team of players together... How, how can any team do well if they don't have a style of play? You know what yeah. I mean? So, like, they have to actually have and develop a style, of, which, which we've talked about yeah, here on the podcast many enough, times. Yeah. Like, as well, like, and the problem that the new guy is going to have, like, depending on what style of play he wants to, or what, what style he wants to do, you United have the players to suit his philosophy yeah. and what he wants to do. Um, it would be would be the next the next question, you know? But, um, I don't know. I, I Again, I just think as an actual squad of players, there is, they have some good players. They do. Um, and again, like that, they were able to pull the result and play really well. Pull the result out of the bag, beat the city in a one-off game. You know, it's, it's the it's the consistency and 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 I think a style of play is what they're they're really missing. And the other side of it is though is the character. Like, is in the, they're under serious scrutiny, they're under serious pressure now. Like, even for the new guy coming in, what what's going to be the goal? Is the goals it, it can't be Champions League? I would think now is it just no, to try no. and get European football of some description again? Is that what it's going to be at this stage? I mean, we're only in, what nine nine games in, and that's what we're. I think Dan, about. it's like, similar. Now it's like just play yeah. good football, win some games. Yeah. I think it's I think it's as simple as that. Like get the crowd going again. Like and it, uh, yeah, and it's just to see where that's coming from because you've always had an attitude problem with United. You know, you've had your Garnachos and your Rashfords, you know, moping around the place, your Bruno Fernandes throwing his toys out of pram. Like, you know, you, you, that's been going on now for a while. So, like, it, does that come from the manager? You would like to say, well, yes, it comes from manager because if you had a proper manager in there, you wouldn't stand for that. And, it, like, either they changed their ways or they wouldn't play. You know, mm -hmm. there has to be a bit of cutthroatness about that. But if you look some of like, you know, it, there's, there's probably, as you said, the squad is they have players there, but how many of them players are going to be able to just be, or how many players this time next year are going to be like, wow, we didn't see that under Ten Hag. Mason Mount, wow, we forgot you were that player. Onana, yeah. Jesus, he's playing great stuff out of the back. You know, is there? Is, are we going to be saying that? You know, are we going to be saying that, I don't know, Rasmus Hoyland is banged in, you know, goal after goal. Like, you could see it. You can see it to a point. But also, you wouldn't be shocked if they're just, it is the players that are, no. are have been holding them yeah. back as well, you know. So it's... it's, it's yeah, well, we, we've seen it so far. We've seen it. They've seen it kind of fail so many times yeah, before. Yeah. It's hard, and I, I even think now I'd be interested in what like, even Massey or uh, you know our friends that are United fans what they actually feel around that appointment. You know, I guess yeah. they all want, and then most of them I talk to want to change. But like, if you ask them to try and pin their their colours to the mass on 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 who would it be, nobody could tell you who, who they actually want to come in. So it'd be just interesting yeah. to see whether or not they they um what they think around it or what their feeling is around it. But at the end, of the day, I think a lot of them would be happy it's not Southgate. Yeah, absolutely. What what Moss was actually saying, um, he said the voice note was he was surprised that like given the result at the weekend and the performance more than anything else mm. ver versus the performances of other games recently, it was after this game against West Ham that the United board decided to move and get rid of Ten Hag. And I suppose on that, we'll move on to that game 
West Ham mm. versus Man United. I'm going to kind of focus on basically the, the penalty decision because that seems to be the most controversial decision. For me, it wasn't a penalty at all. I thought it was a very bad decision. And again, it puts VAR and the referees in the spotlight. Yeah. Um, our resident referee. I was, I was friends. I was just about to ask Howard, what did you make of this decision? Again, like, you know, I was hoping Mossy would be here that I could console him and, and tell him how, if it, you know, this is how it feels. But um, it's just, again, it's just, it's just weird. Like, it's just like, it's why are why right? are you getting involved? Why, yeah. why, what's the point? Michael Oliver, like people, the referee in Brotherhood love Michael Oliver. So if Michael Oliver says something, you better believe it. It's going to be true. So when uh, old David Cooth goes, you know, wambling over to the fucking, to the, to the VAR review uh, screen, I mean, he's gonna he's gonna bloody do exactly what Mike Oliver tells him to do because Mike well, Oliver is his buddy and what, his why, because, why, why can't they disagree like well I, well Are they because, afraid to? because Deck the whole bloody sis the whole refereeing thing uh, in the in England is a joke that's why because they're all in cahoots with each other none of them have they're all buddies they don't none of them have the balls to make any proper decisions but it's just <laughs> they all go drinking together honestly they're yeah. absolutely Ollie and terrible it, the, the, weather, the, the, the standard of refereeing and I'm not sure if it's a Howard Webb's issue is it just the talent of pool referees that they have mm. or is it just that they're all like oh they're giving out a bad decision oh sure we make a bad decision we don't care again you know it's just like they're like together they're laughing about like oh god we're right all the time arrogant you know they're, they're yeah, just no, up no, their own things but like it's just like for that whole thing it's like why get involved what's the point in getting involved no one no one saw anything there like it's nothing you know it's not it's not a it, it's not a clear and obvious decision like there, there's yeah. a whole clip of Howard Webb on the overlap why is he on the overlap it's stupid like referees should be in the background they shouldn't be front and center like they like they, they need to just Blend into the background. That's what referees should do. We shouldn't be talking about them every week, but yet, yeah, still, you've kind of you, you've it's said like another before, level like, of entertainment they're trying to yeah. bring. They're like, because is it someone said to me that the football is getting boring because it, all the possession football that people are playing that they need to have some sort of entertainment. Entertainment at the moment is bloody referees. So, yeah. like, they, they have that clip of overlap. How reps like, oh, why well, are like, you know, we wouldn't want to over referee games and you know we you know only if it's stand out and it's said wow that's a complete mistake by the referee should they get involved like otherwise leave it leave it go and like then you have this decision that was made and it's just you know it's it's silly is it it could be there could be a level of biasness in there as well it could be you know maybe mike oliver doesn't have the it doesn't have the the hots for Man United. Isn't isn't a mad United Man United fan? Maybe he wants to say, look, there is you could give a penalty for this. You actually could you you could get give it, and it, you know, it, it is by the letter of the law. You might you know it could it could be allowed, and then calling them up and then saying, oh yeah, look, they, they hit his shin there. Oh look, go on. Howard's so, gone mental. <laughs> no, but it is. You need it's to like, lay off Twitter, Howard. You need to lay but off it is. It, this is United. Like talk about United now. It, I'm just saying, like, it, it, how has the refereeing gotten this bad? Like. Or like why, why are they saying one thing yeah, and then doing yeah. another thing like it's just it's a weekly thing though isn't it it's a weekly thing it's, really, it's, it's, it genuinely same is. yeah it's the same last result it kept yeah, this yeah. podcast very interesting they need to just get rid of all the man all the referees in the league and just uh, pay, robots honestly just pay pay <laughs> the best robots. referees from around europe around the world Give them a bloody flat in London if they want a flat in London and pay them whatever it is, what a hundred grand a month and just tell them to referee games. And it's what as simple if, as that. What like, if the match is like, up north, like, well, no, they can get a they can have a flat wherever they want, yeah. <laughs> they can, but like, you know what I, I mean? It's it. just like, I can level. see it now. I can see it now. Castellos Ca- Refing Academy, I can see it now. <laughs> But it is like, you know, Champions League, I must say, I've, like, you go and watch the Champions League game now and it's like, wow, you don't even know, you didn't even know the ref was there. I need to see, honestly, I've watched the referee games and there are Champions League games. Yeah, they, like, they do say, just, like, the best referees are the ones that aren't noticed. Yeah, and what, it's just... What, they, why don't they have the automated offside thing yet? Yeah, they don't have that in yet, like, what's going like, on like, there? Like, 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 like the Van Dyke thing, I know we got that game, but like, that took ages, where, like, they would have had that, they? they wouldn't have that straight away, they would have known. Yeah. yeah, that is yeah. that is coming in. It was, wasn't it? it was supposed to come in the start of the season. Then it was supposed to be after the first international break. Course, and now it's it's still, great, still not there. So like, yeah, look, well, that will but, obviously help because it's very, very. It's, it's you know the, straight away. They need to blend more into the background referees. They can't be doing. Of course, uh, you can't. And and this crack about Sky Sports and BT or T, TNT told like, oh, lay off the refs, lads. Give the refs a chance, will you? Don't be saying stuff about the refs after the game and just give them a chance. Like it's just. Now you're hearing commentary and you're like, 
oh yeah, I didn't think that was a foul. And it's like it's yeah. clearly a foul. Like you know what I mean? You know, it's just you're getting by. You're getting you're getting prejudiced commentary then from pundits because they don't want people go lashing out referees. But the rest are yeah. just that bad. <laughs> right. yeah. it, it, it was it was it was a shocker of a decision. And like actually on the balance of that game, and this is something that really I don't think was Ten Hag is is out of Ten Hag's control. Whatever it is this season with United, like they just miss so many chances, so many tips. Yeah. And I'm See saying, Dallow. See Dallow. That was yeah, shocking. like yeah, yeah Dallow. Um, but like but like they had to hit the crossbar a couple of times. They got another day, and this is the thing. And it should have won. West Ham, yeah, West yeah. Ham got like caught the result with three points, but like. Like West Ham are putting up no trees. They should only fucking five or six nil down the first half. Like, yeah. a, 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 and and a, you know he's slightly unlucky, but like the excuses are, are, are you know he's worn all them out. You know he has Ugarte as well. Like, I mean I don't know what, what's going on. There's was asking one of my friends at the weekend. What's the story there? He was supposed to be the you know this hard working uh, you know kind of break up play, but a really can, kind of consolidate Man United no, midfield. No, no, no word of a lie, Dan. I had actually forgot they had signed him until he said it there. <laughs> 50 million or something, wasn't it? Gen- I mean, genuine. he doesn't play him. Uh, play him. Million, yeah. But, um, yeah, look, I think, uh, again, if he had won that game yesterday, it's again the fine lines of management. He won the FA Cup, kept the job. Really bet West Ham yesterday. And then, yeah. you know, again, I, I think it was a follow-on as well. And Mossy had said that the, the game during the week was okay enough to watch it as well, the, the, the Europa League game. So, no, it's what was it? Is it one? Is it one win in his last ten? I thought there was it. Was it? Is it like the, yeah. the, the, the three points in three games in Europa League or something? Is it? As well, yeah. So. Like it's, it's so you know, it's it's a uh, it's definitely like I just go back to the incident. Like it was, it was just never penalty, and I don't know how, as you said, Howard goes to the monitor. Like he's looked at it and he looked at it for ages. <laughs> and, <laughs> and it's, it's like as you said, like followers only feed them. You know. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Coots, coots, you know, like you ever started a couple of coots, coots. You know, he's kind of he's touched his tie, though. You know, he... oh god, he, he's, like, probably yeah. just, he's probably just standing there wondering how the fuck do I get out of this? Yeah, and he, he's made the most of it as well, didn't he? He yeah, really fucking absolutely. made the most of it on the ground. But uh, yeah, it's a big win for West Ham. But I still, um, I'm very skeptical. Actually, the um, other thing Howard Webb says, like, oh, things always look a lot worse in slow motion. You know, we like to give yeah, the yeah, decision yeah. on the field and not go to VAR. And then, like, the perfect example of a slow motion, something that looks bad in slow motion is the bloody yeah. instant at the weekend. So maybe, maybe um, it was fucking what's his name, uh, Ratcliffe. Maybe Ratcliffe rang Oliver and said, fuck, he need yeah, read, maybe he this <laughs> give us, give us a reason or something. Let's yeah, bring yeah, this yeah, conspiracy yeah. theory to another level, know, like, <laughs> right? Yeah, so, but that, that's how um, she wrote. What yeah, uh, what do you call it? So West Ham and United from from the relegation battle to the title fight. Yeah, Arsenal versus Liverpool. Um, very entertaining game. I thought uh, some very good goals. Um, Saka, in particular, got a fantastic goal. I'll get your I'll get your points on it, lads. Like who is the who's the winner and who's the loser? I suppose from this. I mean, Arsenal were depleted. Obviously, Liverpool. It's a point from home against one of their biggest rivals. So I mean. Who's happier with who's happier after the weekend, Howard? Um, I suppose I I I would have said before the game that it was a must win, but you know, I think it was more of a, a must not lose in a, yeah. in the aspect of the, the grand scheme of things. I, I kinda after watching the game I came away with more of a more of a actual feeling that we are are have a good chance of, of winning the league this year. And I think it comes from the point that I I like look. We're all be honest. Like at the start of the season, we all said maybe City, Arsenal, top two, and then Liverpool hadn't signed anyone all summer that they'd be you know maybe running up doing a bit of a title race, but wouldn't last the yeah. the length of time you know. And I I do believe that like the Arsenal that Arsenal team is a better team at the moment than the Liverpool team. I think if we were to have our full strength team, I think we win that game. Um, I think. The, the loss of Gabriel in the second half just we just completely you know we completely went into our into ourselves like having having a back four of party white uh, and um and Kivior and then Lewis Kelly uh, Skelly at the back like you know that's none of them play in any of them positions anyway so i think like it, it, like knowing that i think we had a very good first half and i think after having our first half i was like right i'm confident enough that we should have you know, got the three points, but I think you know with all with Timber and and Gabriel coming off, I was slightly worried that after Liverpool scored that they were going to get another one. I don't know. It was just a bit. I had a bit of a fear when I was uh, when I was getting the updates that I was I was fearful that 
the, there was going to be a, a a knife in the back of the in the back of the neck, I suppose, for from uh, from Liverpool, and I was kind of thankful in that aspect. But um, I think Liverpool will also be delighted with the draw. So I I I think five points off off uh, City isn't the end of the world. I I'm I'm expecting a massive second half of the season from Arsenal, and I think they're going to have that if they can if they have their if they can get their full strength team going. I think they're going to be. With their with the fixtures that they have, you know they'll have City at home, they'll have Aston Villa at home, they'll have Tottenham at home, they'll have a lot of the big boys at home. They won't obviously have Liverpool. I think they'll go. I I think they'll go on a, a on a bit of a run then, and that's the hope. And I think it's just trying to keep in touch with City, uh, and and uh, when we hit January to to get that chance. And I don't think City will hit the points tally that they usually do because they just they're just not firing at all cylinders. They've they've won every game in the Premier League last three or four games with by one goal. So I think. They haven't been they haven't been at it. They've get get it over the line, but I I, I don't know how that's going to last throughout the season. So I'm still pretty optimistic. Um, but yeah, look, great game. I think both both teams. Uh, I think Arsenal may be a bit more sour because they were winning, uh, and they would be a bit disappointed by that. Uh, but I think you know Liverpool, you know, will be will be will be will be happy with the draw as well. Like you know what I mean. So that's that's my kind of two cents. Bef yeah, before I go to Dan just now, where you're saying that City aren't firing all cylinders, we're not absolutely not. But we are winning though, and mm, yeah, we're at yeah. the top of the table. Um, we've dropped four points out of nine games. We're on 20, 23 points. So I mean, definitely not playing as well as we can. But I mean, if it is to kind of come to that that we do start playing as well as we know we can, um, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy the position we're in, Dan. What did you make of yesterday's game? Yeah, just just to pick up on Harris' point, my my concern would be at the moment like Arsenal have to go away to Chelsea and Newcastle, and to be honest with you, watching them at the moment, watching them this season, like, how, would, how would you be confident they go away to Newcastle with Chelsea win? Because I actually looking at it, I like I think that Arsenal could be further behind in in, in three weeks time. Oh, they could be easy, yeah. I think look, because they're yeah. tough games, like they're not, they're not. Like, oh, they're, they're, they're not. Oh no, they're they're very tough games, especially like you know you like to have, maybe have one of them in the second half of the season rather than having two of them in a row. But um, like what I would say is that we've beaten Villa and and Tottenham away uh, already this season. Uh, you know, depending like if it's that deplete squad that finishes Liverpool squad a game, right, we're in trouble. But like. We have been quite unlucky with the number of injuries we've got. Maybe we were very lucky last season for not getting all injuries. But I think we we have like I I personally feel like we we haven't got the rub of the green at all this season yet. Uh, the little fifty fifty things that might have gone our way just hasn't gone away. Like it's very easily that like that Declan Rice red card wasn't a red card. You know, there's little things, and then like I think we could be four points better off. Uh, easily. Yeah, I guess that. Season. But what I'm, saying, what I'm saying is, is you're saying that big, big, like a big second half of the season which yeah like, like of course like when you're like competing for the title you that would be the hope you'd imagine the city would probably be better second half of the season as well my point is kind of though is like there's already there's five points in it like that, oh you like, can't afford a, you can't afford there's a possibility know, yeah, that yeah. arsenal could be 10 10 behind going into yeah the that's half the most thing. yeah 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 but that's yeah just yeah. just at the moment like i don't know i, I just i find <clears throat> a that just with them two games that are coming up like their their potential Banana skins, considering as well as you said there, like we don't know what the story is. There's talk that a hundred percent. There is a lot. Like, yeah, yeah, I know. I guess well, you. But the, the, the thing I said that is that there is like, like the, the games that we're playing at the moment, like your Newcastle away, your Chelsea away, your 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 City away, your Tottenham away, Villa away. Like they are like literally the the hardest games you can have in a season. Like, do you know what I mean? They they like what I mean is like I suppose our first half of our our games. Uh, I think the, a lot of away games are more the difficult away games that you can have in the first half of your season. So, like, okay, we're going to be a few uh, points behind. You can't get too far behind, but like, that's not to say that like you, you can you can you can still drop points to them teams and still win the league. I I, I what my my problem is that like you know we we'll, we'll have players coming back, but. We like even at the weekend there, like a lot of pundits said, oh Liverpool are going to win, Liverpool are going to win. Like Arsenal were like didn't get it over the line, but like I still think we got a bit of confidence from the performance. Mm -hmm. We've lost, we've dropped, we've dropped, we've dropped points against Brighton. We drop, we drew against City, and we and we had a a a, a freak, let's say, loss to Bournemouth. Like it's like it hasn't been all so because of the Bournemouth result. Like every you're going to have one of them kind of results through the whole season. Like you're going to have a. 
a team, a Wolves or someone like that that comes and beats you. Like, you know, that just that just happens. You know what I mean? So, like, it hasn't been, if we look at the whole grand scheme of things, the whole picture, you, you like, you, yeah. you could draw against Liverpool. Like, it's not, I think you can easily put doom and gloom on things. I think the worry for Arsenal is more about getting our getting our team together, like getting our players back and going. Like, because, like, we do have, I think, this, the the second, if not the best team in, in the league. So it's just a matter of trying to string the results together. But like I know what you're saying, it's like we're playing Newcastle away and then Chelsea away. But I'm talking about if they're coming up soon. I, I, yeah, they're the next, the next two games. Our next two games. Yeah, yeah. The next two games and and there's potential. I know Gabriel are talking about MCL and I don't know his knee. What way that's going to be? I think he's fine. You know, yeah. yeah, that obviously would be a blow. Timber again seems to just be one. I don't know where they can keep him fit. Uh, I know other guys should come back, whatever like that. But just it's just like you know, it's all about going saying. Second half of the season going to be here, but like, like, you know, at the moment I wouldn't trust them. Is what I'm trying to say. I don't trust Arsenal at the moment. Even yesterday, I thought that trying to go back to actual game, I thought that Arsenal should have won that game. This is the problem. They should have beaten City. Yeah. They should have beaten Liverpool, but they didn't. Yeah, and that, yeah. that's where no, uh, you're yeah, with yeah. the you're with the points that they could have got from the red card situation. But like, they're they're two points where it should really have been six. I think on the on the balance of of. Oh, uh, of, of the of the two games, um, yeah. you know, but like, uh, as for Liverpool, yeah, I I actually thought we were poor enough, uh, in particular in the first half. I think we set off Arsenal and showed them too much respect. And, That's what I uh, was I was reading like that. Did Liverpool kind of did they let let Arsenal off the hook really? Yeah, I think they just they showed them a bit too much respect. I think they were I think we're both in midfield. I was surprised actually. I thought Moreno looks even physically. He's he's a an art if you want to say an Arsenal type of player. Um, like he just looked robust, good on the ball, technically good. Uh, yeah, I thought in, the, in in midfield in particular, actually, though, that, that 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 they were finding pockets of space quite easily, and we didn't really press too well at all um, as a team. Bar Nunes, really, Nunes was, was put in a serious shift to top for ninety minutes. But um, yeah, and then I think second half, I think Liverpool were coming back into the game. The Gabriel situation helped, but yeah, I don't get. Like, I understand about the injuries in game in particular. But, like if Liverpool were in the games last season, the kids, you know what I mean, like. You, it wasn't that long ago that like, Liverpool had like, literally had about six, six or seven first team players missing, and we're playing with kids and able to, to scramble get results. Like you know, yeah. Arsenal's starting lineup yesterday. I thought Saka would play, and I and the pub I was in, I said if Saka plays here, I worry for Robertson because Robertson's been off in the season, right. and like lo and behold, yeah, he, yeah whatever away, he was, he was done. Now, thankfully, he was he was done a couple of more times in the first half, thankfully second half. Uh, there wasn't too much of that, but he, he, you know, Saka just showed how good he is. That he's a he's a exceptional uh, player, and in particular in the first half, like he destroyed us. Like he was, anytime he got the ball, he was causing serious damage. And actually, I thought Diaz would would get a good tune out of Party. Party was brilliant. He was Party brilliant. I think yeah, the, Diaz got the better of him once. But apart from that, like yeah, uh, yeah Party did very well. Right? Solid. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. I think going to Arsenal and getting a point because I think Arsenal are still, regardless, you know, about missing one or two players, it's really hard to go to Emirates and win. And in yeah. particular, this Arteta Arsenal to go and to be able to beat them. So I was happy enough with a, a with the point in particular because I did think for large periods we were probably second best. Not that Arsenal actually opened us up much, is in like there wasn't that many chances in the game. Yeah, I think um, yeah, Arsenal sat back a control. Up, like, after, yeah, after they went two one up, I think they sat back yeah. too much. I think that was a problem. And then Gabriel went off, and then they were like, right, let's just, you know, yeah. I think you know sometimes they went I think blocked, that, didn't they? them they games, went blocked, uh, you know, them oh. games losing a losing a man and then trying to sit back. I think that's probably it's grand to do that in them games, but I think it's probably taught them a bit of uh probably uh, bad habits in that aspect you know what i mean that uh, like yeah. they get a goal it's like okay we're nearly afraid to go co- do you know go on go for the juggler like so yeah that's something that you know they'll need to learn before here in the end of the season to want to yeah. win the league like uh, and in particular like is when them injuries you know uh happened to arsenal i just felt that like we, did, we didn't create enough like you know considering as you said they were all out of position i actually think ben white though is He's quality, like he's actually a really good player is he like ben white? he's very good yeah. yeah center back yeah. right back he can yeah yeah, yeah you know like, yeah, he's, uh, yeah. yeah. But but like the goal that we got it was a good goal. Like Trent to be honest with you, I thought was was fair to He kept giving the ball away. Uh, was going for like big diagonal balls. Nothing was coming off for him. It was a great ball for the for the for the goal. And in fairness to Nunes, like he his work rate and he actually for once, uh, he he put it on the plate for Salah. So like it was I thought he in particular there's not too many standouts for me Liverpool uh, performance level wise. I think there was not too many of them that played that well. Probably Nunes being maybe the exception. Um, just in his overall what he gave the team in, in the game especially like at times when Arsenal were 
you know, we were camped in for a while. Couldn't get the ball. Didn't have our own half for, for, for periods of that game. But happy enough for the point. And to be honest with you, I think after that result, even though we didn't play that well, kind of going on what you were kind of saying there, Howard, I would be more, for the first time, be a bit more confident that Liverpool will compete in the title race. Like, like I mean, yeah. for this way, you look at the table now, but I actually think in, in a month's time, Liverpool potentially could be backed up because I think I think Liverpool at the moment would beat that City side in Anfield. I think they would. Um, and, and I know we get on to City, but like it seems to be the case at the moment, case in point, that if if Haaland isn't scoring, they're not really getting that many goals from other areas, really. Bar Champ so once the icon pops up. But um you know, it, it just I, I'd be confident enough, like say, for them coming to Anfield for at the moment to play them at this stage of the season and think that we could beat them. So I I be I'd be kind of a uh, more happy to say the Liverpool are in the title race now than after the Chelsea results getting over the line the way we kind of were able to grind that out and then to get a point at the Emirates in a game where they thought we were second best and didn't look like we were going to get I don't know was that like our only chance second half you know, maybe we only had like yeah do we have yeah, yeah 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 well it was only, um, yeah the only clear cut chance like I think Arsenal were a bit yeah. naive yeah their defender Kivior was was poor in that goal but I can just say one thing right Rice's set piece quality fuck me. Uh. That was uh, they, they were they were on point as well. So anyway, look, that's my thoughts. I'm happy enough to, to kind of go with that that uh, that Liverpool could potentially be there thereabouts. And I think you know, I think you definitely are there. I mean, mm-hmm. there were, like slot came in, like he made no changes to that team. That team didn't need any changes. You know, maybe a little bit of freshening up and a player being brought in, but I mean, there was nothing wrong with Liverpool over the summer. And I mean, he's just, he has you taken. He's playing a slightly different style of play than what was happening under Klopp. And I mean, you're up there for a reason. You're a point behind uh, City. Uh, yeah. uh, no, 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 just like nine games in, quarter of the season is gone. Mm. You know what I mean? You're up there. You're up there for a reason. I mean, mm. everyone is kind of talking about this, you know, awful run of fixtures, but I mean, it hasn't phased you yet. So, I mean, he absolutely, you are in the title race, 100%. Yeah. It's just, it depends, like, of the three teams, you know, who's going to fall away first, and then it'll be a uh, down to two, yeah. and then whoever, I, I, but, um, yeah. Yeah, and the only other thing, I suppose, is the style that we are playing, the legs shouldn't burn out as quickly come the last period of the season that they would have done under... I suppose the club style, yeah, it's good you know, point, the, yeah. things are everything, everything is a lot more measured. You'd hope then, that as a, a, a case in point to that, that you wouldn't pick up as many injuries because they're not working them as hard as well. But yeah. like, like a, there, there's definitely a if we can keep, like, say, our starting level more now, we're there, like, that's starting level. There is, though, I think when you look at Arsenal's bench and City's bench and our bench, I do think that our bench would be the weakest of the three. So when you're talking about squad rotation and being able to, to you know, to, to compete in all fronts, um. I think that's where it still would be concerned. I do think that the, the quality we can bring off the bench isn't as good as a, when Arsenal have everyone available or or um or City. I just I just wonder, like say with Liverpool, um, because they are like they're flying as far as I can see. They're playing the best of the of us three. Form, yeah, on form. Yeah, they're on form. Three, they're playing yeah, the yeah. best. But I mean, I'm just wondering, could off the field, off field stuff be? The distraction that kind of takes your eye off the ball. B the three the three lads that like come from city, come from city, man. No, look, I mean, what to, I'm just curious. I mean, because I was reading, I was reading Dunphy today. He kind of thinks that, like it will be the three lads and their whole contract status as well that kind of maybe takes your eye off the ball. And I mean, he's he was he was fairly uh, critical of um, Trent as well yesterday, saying that like he was playing like he he just he didn't really care. No, I, I can't say I saw that, but I mean. The longer it goes on that they haven't signed or like there's little kind of talk of them signing, the mm. the more was uncertainty that that creates. And I mean, if you get into the club, like they're probably their three most important players as well as Allison, maybe. That like yeah. if there if a rumor starts, like no, okay, Trent is definitely going to Real or the rumors are there. They're there. My 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 position would have changed though because I at the start of when we talked about this. I thought of the three. Trent was the most important to keep, but also I thought he was the most likely that we'd hold on to of yeah. the three, like given age profile uh, and even from Liverpool, etc. But my position is really changed because unless he's unless it's just a very much which could be the case, a chess game where he's saying all these things into the media to really try and you know um, kind of get the best deal that he can get and, and sign on. Uh, like he, he, you know, he said there the other day that he wants to win the Ballon d'Or. Yeah. And he said there a couple of weeks ago that um, he wants to be at a club that's competing for all the big trophies uh, and winning trophies. Um, so 
I, my business has changed. I think he's definitely going to be traded, to be honest. I, 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 so, I, I just, just, just the way he's talking, how could you not think that? That's what yeah. it's all sing, singling. But I, I, I am confident that it seems the negotiations are, are starting even from like, um, and I think again the season he just important. Like we need, you know, I think we get another two years out of him. Um, I, I, you know, I think it would be would be great. And uh, Salah again, I don't see why they wouldn't be looking at trying to keep him on. Like what he's done so far in the season, the six goals and five assists. Yeah. You know, um, even his record like, it's amazing when you showed his record against the top six. Don't know if you've seen that and that as well. Like it's insane. Like, yeah, it's, very goals, good. it's eleven goals against Arsenal. Um, he's a hip goals against United as well, but so I don't, I don't know about distraction. I think, of course, there's going to be talk, as you said, in the dressing room or um, about who's doing what. I'd imagine though that you know Trent is saying this stuff out in the media, so he's obviously having conversations with his teammates. He's vice captain. Um, you wouldn't want to be in a position. I don't think that it comes to January though, and have all three of them still with nothing that's, going on. That's once you hit that, yeah, yeah, when you hit that, you're you're kind of like they can't even though that he can talk. How it goes there anyway, you'd imagine. And that's that's the way it goes. But that actually uh, in the last six months, you know, uh yeah, I I, I don't I wouldn't be too I wouldn't be that worried about the distraction part, but like, I'm concerned that I think Kent probably is going to leave based on all that he's saying in the media. Uh what would be class would be a scenario where you get to February, March time, Liverpool are in the title race and all three of them are the same. All three of them sign. Yeah, there's that's the uh, other side of the coin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But um yeah, look, it, it is a it is a dodgy one. But I agree with I, I don't actually think I don't know, I've read a lot of dumpy stuff recently and, and he said a lot of bizarre stuff. I'd be kind of concerned <laughs> he's going down the Joe Biden route now or something. But yeah. uh, he, he wasn't good. He wasn't uh, good yesterday, Trent. No, he's right about that. And he, he kind of was very just nonchalantly. Yeah. Trying to play these ridiculous passes when Liverpool needed a bit of the ball, like because we weren't able to get it. But um, yeah, anyway, I think you know, uh, there's plenty of time. Money should be there. It's more what does Trent want to achieve? Like he said, he wants yeah. to be Liverpool captain. You know, he says that he wants to win trophies. Liverpool look like they're going to compete for trophies, but again, like Madrid, our Madrid is Trent. Buddy Bellingham has gone there. True. The, the talk is is that they're going to try and get Davis from Munich on a free transfer on the left wing. A left back and trying to right back, like if they manage that, you know what I mean. Like uh, we, we were talking Galactico style stuff, would be brilliant, wouldn't we? Like you know, yeah. Even if I watched their game at the weekend, mind you, Jesus, I've only seen their their matches the weekend. Yeah. They uh, they um, Lewandowski could have had six goals. Yeah, yeah. they hockey them, but anyway. Um. All right, cool. What do you call it? We're just. I'm just making sure I want to get on to um, fantasy football as well. So I'm just going to go through the rest of the results. So we had City 1, Southampton 0, West Ham 2, United 1. We covered that one. Chelsea 2, Newcastle United 1. For anyone who didn't see Palmer's pass. Oh, sick. Yeah. Beautiful stuff. Um, he has, he's so good. Like, honestly, it is. Uh, he's I, on I, a different level, though. He's it, on a different level. I just want to mention say one thing very quickly that I heard recently was like, <laughs> he got out of City possibly at the right time before he got integrated into the whole Pep system of control. And oh, I died before they relegated him. Sorry, no, 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 I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> what do you call it? Just the, just the whole idea that like when you get into City team, you kind of have to abide by Pep's rules of kind of control the game, contain the game, pass, pass, pass. Whereas Palmer was very much, he's almost this kind of maverick type player where like that's not what he does. So, like he looks for his killer pass. He looks for the kind of the special type pass, special goal. He is a very special player. And I mean, you saw that in the past there at the weekend. Like it was just it was ridiculous that he the vision he had to kind of make the pass, the the weight on the pass for for um Pedro Neto to kind of roll on to and everything. It was Keen was going mental over it on Sky Sports. It was brilliant. Yeah, he, but any, anything is just anything that's good that they're gonna do, it's gonna come through. Like he's just yeah. he is he's on, I think he's on a different Different level though. Yeah. And of um, course, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be Palmer unless he gave a brilliant, <laughs> brilliant interview afterwards as well. If if you haven't seen it, definitely give it a watch. Um, and, Palace, and you know what? Just like, on that though, side, I think Newcastle could have got a point. It's fucking easy. Like, what was he doing? Of course. You know, yeah. you know he could they could have easily got a point. Newcastle, uh, it, it would have been the chance they had second half. You know, Chelsea mm-hmm. will concede. That's the thing. They'll score, but they will. Yeah, yeah just terrible as, defense. Yeah, awful defense. Um, Palace won. Spurs nil. Brentford 4, Ipswich 3, Villa 1, Bournemouth 1, Brighton 2, Wolves 2, Everton 1, Fulham 1, Leicester 1, Notts Forest 3. Notts Forest are doing well. They're all the piss Chris taking. Chris Wood's a monster. Pavarotti. Chris Wood's a monster. Pavarotti, the owner, knows what he's doing. I mean, 
it's not, yeah. it's not it's not awful they're doing pretty well um Nuno is doing all right and we were uh fairly critical about him last season I did I said um, he'd be the first manager to get sacked yeah absolutely okay listen we'll move quickly on to yeah, fantasy yeah. football um just give us a quick summary Dan how is it looking the table yeah, we have a new so we have a new leader we, we do yeah we have a new leader and and interesting enough as well there was a there was a triple captain territory and um, oh. I think Mr uh, our, our good friend Mossy uh, was had triple captain Alan there at the weekend as did many others so I think you'd be left that is kind of you, You'd be left a bit fucking raw, uh, given he scored after what four or five minutes yeah, against the worst team in the league, that. and then he missed. I don't know, was it three, four chances that he probably should have put away? Had some but, great uh, chances. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so the new leader here, John B. O'Reardon. Do you know him? No, no. Oh. Yeah, well, John sounds, is, sounds is, like uh, a he sounds like a what do you call it? A writer. Oh, what? Yeah, he's uh, he's taking over now with a new leader. Uh, he'll go week 78 points, which you know is uh, is good going. Uh, good, yeah. he, Chris Wood is causing damage. Like, he, he's a uh, few lads that had Wood there got 13 point haul from him, and he's uh, he's one of the differentials. It's not everybody owns him. Uh, and Mopoino as well, who's having a great season, isn't he? Uh, at um, uh, uh, Brentford. Yeah. Uh, so them two, uh, yeah, we're we're big points hitters for uh, him. I I use my free hit because I wanted to have a bit of crack at the weekend <laughs> on the stack. So I decided to use my free hit and uh, done all right. Yeah, I got a sixty-seven. But um, yeah, John B. O'Reardon and Shane Durkin actually needs to get a shout out because he uh, oh, yeah. he he had triple captain's talent, which he won't be happy about. But he still came away with eighty-three points. He took a minus four, so seventy-nine. Which is a which is a, a big return as well. Again, he is wood, but uh, yeah, there was about I think there was I didn't count everybody, but there was at least six or seven that used their triple captain chip um, on Haaland. So they would be disappointed considering uh, he only got the the one goal. Um, yeah, so yeah, John B. O'Reardon, you are sure. in the lead, my friend. The poet is leading, and <laughs> what do you call it? I'm looking at yourself in tenth, Dan Howard. You're in fourteenth. Whereabouts is Moss? He's looking at his eighteenth. 18th, okay. There's a couple of uh, familiar faces. I see Keenan Cunningham with Totty's Tricksters. That name that's sounds, Keenan. Uh, yeah, he was on the right. He was a Roma a, fan. Was Roma on, fan, yeah. 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 Totty's yeah. Tricksters. Um, very good. Did I see Totty is coming out of retirement? I did read something there. Yeah, I read I, something. I don't know what it is, but yeah, it was. It did be just an article. I don't know. I didn't click into it. So it's just say whether pick dating things or or whether or not there's a. You don't have to worry about Keenan though. He, he, he's dirty. He won't. He did fall away. Oh, fair enough. Um, okay, so congrats to the poet. He's in number one, and one Oops. point behind is Paddy Carney with afternoon delete. Okay. Yeah. Super six prediction. So this week it is Carabao Cup week. So it's midweek prediction. So do get the main. See who's winning that. Just see who's leading it. No, go ahead. My brother is top. Oh, uh, really? uh, Richard is yeah, it? Yeah, Richard. Yeah, it's really first time right. doing this. So he's a. Uh, I don't know. He's fucking picking scores left, right, and center. Yeah, good stuff. Um, <laughs> fixtures: Brighton, Liverpool, Newcastle, Chelsea, Villa, and Palace, United, and Leicester, Preston, and Arsenal, and then Spurs and City. So, um, Dan, we'll go with yourself first of all for Brighton and Liverpool. Uh, this is on Wednesday. Yeah, I, I, I'm going for Liverpool two one, but actually, like, I think I think Brighton could do you. Uh, yeah, they could easily. I think we make a few changes. Um, oh, yeah. you're playing Brighton then again at the weekend. In the home and the weekend. This always happens, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it? And like even a cha- I remember playing football football manager that was yes, it happens always the, that the whole time, <laughs> whole time. Yeah, Howard it's Reed, Reed Howard. Reed Howard is um, yeah, okay, so I go, Liverpool. I go to one. They're naive enough. They're naive. They're naive enough, like uh, Brighton as well, though. So I do think that we create chances. Uh, yeah, so I, I go to one. Okay, uh, Newcastle and Chelsea again. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Okay, I have. Um, Dan, I'm sorry, go on, Dan. Yeah, yeah, Dan. Who do you think uh, for that one? Wait your turn. Yeah, I think, I think Chelsea have so many players. So then, uh, what's that? Dan? Yeah, I, I go. I go. <laughs> huh? What was uh, the score you predicted? <laughs> I got two one. Two one. Okay. Two one Newcastle. No, two one Chelsea. Are you, you, two one Chelsea. Two one yeah. Newcastle. Sorry, it was yeah. uh, yes. Newcastle are home again. Okay. Uh, um, um, Villa and Palace, Howard. I'll have two nil Villa. Okay, very good. And I'll give you the Arsenal game. Preston and Arsenal. Oh, lovely. Uh two nil Arsenal. You'll hardly play any of the big names, will you? No, it'll be. 
yeah, it'd be quite enough, I'd say, and uh, all the teenagers would be out. Yeah, I'd say so. United and Leicester, now, I'll give that one. Sorry, Dan, go ahead. I, I, I kind of, you know, and I've said this before, in the, in this round, if we were to get knocked out, I wouldn't lose any. <laughs> okay, very good. Man United and Leicester. Um, yeah, I think, look, it tends to happen when a manager loses. When a manager is gone, the next game, they tend to be a bounce. I do think they'll beat Leicester. Um, yeah. But again, nothing really would surprise me there. Spurs and City will be an interesting game. Um, Spurs, their good form has been at home this season, whereas City, I do think, will rest a few. Again, like Dan, if we were to lose that one, Again, I want to be concentrating on the league and the Champions League. It wouldn't be the end of the world. Again, especially the fact we're at home. Uh, sorry, we're away if we're at home. I would expect a win, but I will go for United win, 2 0 Leicester, Spurs, and City. City to win on penalties. Um, yeah. It's a big one for Spurs, isn't it? You know, considering the whole, you know, winning the trophy. Was it, didn't Pascal pa- 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 say there a few weeks ago? Didn't he? he said, like, he always wins the trophy in a second. Well, I kind of really need to win in that. That was a bold statement to make, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, it'd be interesting yeah, to see what happens. Them. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um all right, lads, it's pretty much we're nearly at the hour. Um another two or three minutes. Any other business to add before we finish up? I, I do. I just I, I for people who are viewing and seeing my um my screen of uh, oh, yeah. Liverpool seven, Man United nil, I just wanted to give a tiny bit of context in it. So I wanted to do that this evening in memory of uh, Eric. I'm gonna really he, miss him because he's not David, dead. <laughs> He gave me he gave me one of the best moments of my life because uh, I was at that game. So oh, I nice. just thought that in his memory, I would uh, I would put that up as a photograph of, of what memory I'll take away from Eric's time in England. In English you, football. Know, you know, he could do it. It wouldn't be surprised me if he went on. He will manage again, obviously, and go on and do very well at another club. He, they'll meet Man United in the latter stages of some European <laughs> competition in two or three years' time. He'll end up they'll end up destroying United and he'll have the last laugh. As has happened before, like, you know, so. Oh, it's funny, actually, the Mourinho, did you see Mourinho's antics? Yeah. Very funny. And he said yeah, he'd he, come back to the Premier League. Do you know what? I'd like to see him back. I just think he's... <laughs> of course. He's yeah. gone a bit mad, is he, though? He's fucking lost. He's gone a bit mad. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, who could he go back to, like? Chelsea, United, uh, Spurs, all done. Be interesting. Yeah. Maybe the likes of an Everton going into a new stadium. Yeah, or New, uh, Newcastle. Newcastle got rid of Eddie Howe. You never know. That would be a type of move that he could make. Yeah. 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 It's just, it's, it's, it's just his antics are just, so funny. I read about him as well as our yeah. Fenerbahce. Like, again, he's not, he hasn't moved over there full time. He's, he's living in a hotel, living out of a hotel. That's what he does at each club. <laughs> You know, he just he doesn't give any kind of indication of being loyal or wanting to stick around for a long time. He just takes a suite at the at the nicest hotel and kind of just stays there for like Chills out there. ridiculous money a night, like so. Until he decides to leave or get sacked. Yeah, pretty much. Well, how how are you? One more league thing at refs there before we go on. That's like our contest. Uh, the only last thing I would say I was I was that Havertz last minute goal that was you know that was tapped in. I thought it was a weird decision by. Uh, Anthony Taylor, uh, did you see that the Kivio or foul yeah, they were saying yeah. about? It was. I actually it think Havertz was, was a foul. I thought Havertz elbowed Kanat in the face. Yeah, I think that. I yeah. honestly think that was that that part of it. The foul, but the problem, the problem is that the problem is he gave the foul for the Kivio. The challenge, first part, which yeah, is which again is a bit weird. It's like he's like, oh, it's nearly a draw. I, was, I nearly just get out of here with a draw. <laughs> like it's like the ref is trying to get out of here with a draw. He's like, right, I'm just you know, any if they're true and goal, fuck it, better blow my whistle. I just thought that was a bit I, weird. I would tell me before we go. Who, who does Coot support? <laughs> <laughs> Whole city, I think, or something like that. <laughs> Jesus Christ. What's his first name? David. David. Davey. Davey, Davey Coots. 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 Davey Coots in the house. All right, <laughs> lads, thank you very much as always. Um, that was Good 50 thing. episodes in. That was brilliant. And yeah. here's to another 50 more. Perfect. Have a Thanks, good guys. evening, Dan. Cheers. Mind yourself, Howard, and mind yourself, and Mass will be back with us next Monday, okay? Cheers, folks. Thanks, Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Good luck.